Hello, this is Yuan again. I am going to be talking about solar imaging today. I was going to do a hydrogen oxygen oxygen image, but I need more data, so it will take a bit longer. But let's talk about solar imaging and how I do it. I've been doing it for about five months. I've been progressively getting better at it. Uh, I've had a few of my images being shared around, one by NASA and by other uh, publishers, but let me kind of explain how solar imaging is done and how you should go about doing it yourself. So first, you need to understand the seeing conditions in where you're going to image. That will define what equipment you can use and the limitations that come with it. Now, you have to calculate your telescope's resolution versus your seeing to understand how much, how large of an aperture telescope you can use. So let's get into it with my equipment. I use this telescope. It is a Coronado 9. The Solar Max 3. It is a really good telescope. It has um, an adjustable focuser that can be moved in and out. Uh, you need to use a diagonal for refractors. Then you can tune it from the front by moving the objective like this to shift the band pass to darker, going from prominences to chromosphere. And then you can also tilt it using this little thing. The tilt is mostly cool when you're looking at compensating for certain uh, tilts that come somewhere else in the system. So that's the telescope. Now, what system do I use? I use a few. I actually double stack it with this. This is a Daystar Gemini, and it is has two Edlons in one where you can switch from one to another. It is really good. It's kind of limited by the aperture that it has. So honestly, I would say if you cannot get anything else, um, a Daystar Quirk or, Quant or Gemini is amazing. But then I was lucky enough to find one of these. This is called a Daystar Quantum. This is an SE. Uh, it's a standard edition, not a professional edition. So it's not guaranteed to be sharp across, but it's really good. So in this configuration, I have it with a PowerMate 4X here. Um, this is kind of necessary to create the best imaging conditions for the Adlon and a ZW174 mono you're going to use a mono camera for solar color is not going to work and i also use this is it's a tilt device called the daystar eliminator it's amazing it will help you get rid of tilt from your sensor and those nasty newtonian rings so this is what i use today this is the specific imaging train along with the coronado scope let's take a look at what i got with it so let me switch to my fix insight here's a quick frame i've shot 5000 frames this is one single frame unstacked it's pretty blurry the seeing today was okay it wasn't good it wasn't bad it was okay so this is the stack as you can see more detail less noise there's a big prominence happening here and there's a nice filament that i'm kind of searching for so let's take a look at what happens next after i process this I did a bit of sharpness, deconvolution, and super contrast in a tool called Astra Imaging Tool. It's amazing for solar photography. Then I basically took it to Photoshop where you start kind of pulling the data. Now I invert all my solar images because I find it um, the most pleasing kind of uh, aesthetic. This is where I added uh, a few camera raw changes, uh, an overlay with a high pass, and a few other things to get where it is. And then I colored it. So let's take a look at what it looks like colored. This is the actual image colored. The detail is pretty good. Again, the seeing limits the sharpness that you can get plus the aperture. In this case, I was actually really pleased. It's sharp almost across the entire field, which is something that this kind of struggles with because it's got a smaller imaging circle. And after some more processing and some enhancement, I got to this. It is a beautiful image for about 30 minutes worth of work. I think it's incredible. Now, this is, bear in mind, this is uh, an okay seeing day. So let's take a look at what happens if you have great seeing. So I was lucky enough one day uh, be before a live stream with Telescope Express to check the conditions and the seeing was extraordinary. As you can see, the details are amazing. The filaments are really well defined and it just looks stunning. This is one that NASA picked up and mentioned as one of the APOT notable images. And it was actually taking with this. And to my surprise, it worked fantastically well. 
I still love this image. It's probably the best solar image I've taken. You can check to see what the sun looks like with the sun today and using Stargaze or whatever app you have on your device that you use. I'll do a video in the future. You can check to see the solar, uh, the seeing conditions, excuse me. Those are very important because if you go to a bigger aperture, which I will, it's going to be blind. A smaller telescope actually will work better if the seeing is bad. So the 90 millimeter today created this really good image, image, but the 152 struggled to pull any 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 kind of detail, any kind of sharpness was lost. It was fuzzy, it was bad. So when you think about solar photography, planetary photography, the limiting factor is not your aperture, but it's going to be your seeing conditions. So take that into account when you're looking to do this. Now, I think that a lot of you will get into solar photography because you're curious after doing deep space imaging. It is amazing. It is pretty good, pretty good uh, challenge. But again, don't don't pressure yourselves too much. If you have questions, let me know and I will see you in the next video.